Greetings, I'm Professor Lazarus and our topic for discussion today will be depreciation. Before I get into the topic, I'd like to draw your attention to some data on the whiteboard behind me. I'm going to step aside for a minute and give you a chance to review some of the basic information I have on a problem that I have written up at the back and then I'll come right back and we can continue with our discussion. Okay, now that you've had a chance to look at the data, let's talk about depreciation. Well, we'll start off with the obvious question, what is depreciation? I'm sure you've all heard the term before, and we all may have slightly different understanding or interpretation of what the term means. But very simply, in an informal way, depreciation is nothing but the loss in value. Loss in value of a tangible asset. So what are some examples of tangible assets that get depreciated? Equipment, all kinds of equipment get depreciated. You could have office equipment like your copiers, printers, fax machines, computers, etc. Or you could have heavy duty equipment like machinery in a factory. All these things will get depreciated. Uh, buildings will get depreciated. The one notable exception under accounting rules of a tangible asset that does not get depreciated is land. Land never gets depreciated and stays on our books uh, pretty much at its original cost. So that is a very broad uh, brush approach to what is depreciation and uh, some examples about what type of assets get depreciated. Well, let's look at the problem behind us. We have Morgana company that purchases a copier for $11,000 and has a useful life of five years. The residual or salvage value, those terms are interchangeable, is $1,000. Now, I've expressed a useful life in two ways, five years or 100,000 copies, and there's a reason why I have it both ways. And, the, and there's some additional information here. The, copiers, the copier rather has produced copies in 2011 in the amount of 12,000 copies, and in 2012, this copier has produced 15,000 copies. So we're gonna take this basic data and go through a series of calculations using different depreciation methods. The first method that I'd like to highlight is the straight line method. So what we're going to do under the straight line method is we are going to calculate the depreciation expense for the first year, which is 2011, and then for the second year, which is 2012. That will be the first thing we're going to calculate. Now before we get into the calculations, let's try to have some clarity on what some of these terms mean in the data. We were introduced to the term residual value or salvage value. Again, these terms are used interchangeably. So what do we mean by this? Very simply, your residual value or salvage value is the value that the asset is expected to have after we have depreciated it over a period of time. That period of time over which we depreciate the asset is called the useful life. So what is this useful life? How do we come up with this useful life? The good news is that we accountants can rely on gap guidelines to help us determine the useful life of various classes of assets. But what exactly do we mean by useful life? Well, take this copier. I bought this copier at the start of 2011. I know that this copier is going to last me for many years. I know that this copier will benefit me for a number of years. How many years will it benefit me? I have no idea. 
All I know is it's going to benefit me for more than one year. So if that's the case, then when I first buy the copier in 2011, I want to record the copier as an asset, not as an expense, but as an asset. So I record the copier as an asset, equipment asset, for instance, in the amount of the original cost, which is $11,000. Then each year, I'm going to take a small piece of that $11,000 and I'm going to reduce my asset value by a small amount, which will be my depreciation amount. And I will reclassify that amount as depreciation expense. So very simply, the original asset keeps going down in value by the amount we depreciate each year. And the amount we depreciate each year, remember it's a double entry, two accounts are affected. So your asset goes down in value on one side, and then on the other side, you're going to record a depreciation expense for the loss in value of that asset. So useful life is that period of time over which we accomplish this objective. Does it mean that this asset will only last me five years? No, it could last me much longer than five or even less than five. But for accounting purposes, we use five years as that period of time over which we're going to take the asset cost and then apportion that as depreciation expense in small increments. So the way we can calculate the depreciation expense varies depending on which method we use. In this unit, we will talk about two different methods of calculating depreciation expense. The first one again is a straight line method. So under the straight line method, the formula to calculate your annual depreciation expense will be your original cost minus your salvage value divided by your useful life. In this case, $11,000 minus 1,000, which is 10,000 over five years, that gives us $2,000. Each year, under the straight line method, each year for the next five years, starting from 2011, your depreciation expense will be the same, 2,000, 2,000, 2,000, etc. The depreciation expense stays constant. Now it's important to note here that this method is a very popular method and is widely used. However, the, the theoretical conceptual weakness of this method is that it does not always reflect reality. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that we are assuming that the loss in value on this copier, based on the numbers given, will be 2000 every year. Yet, our usage of this copier varies. From the original data, you can see that we don't use the copier exactly the same amount. So in theory, we say it depreciates by $2,000, but in reality, the copier will be depreciating or going down in value at different amounts each year. But we don't worry about reality, we're going to stick to our, our theoretical calculations for accounting purposes. So that's the way we calculate depreciation expense under the straight line method. Then next, in item B, we're going to calculate our accumulated depreciation. What is accumulated depreciation? Accumulated depreciation is a total depreciation that you will have taken on an asset from the day you bought it until today, whatever today might be. In this case, we are going to look at accumulated depreciation at the end of 2012. This means we have to see how much depreciation have we taken on this asset from the day we bought it, which is the beginning of 2011 till the end of 2012. That's two full years. So our accumulated depreciation then is our depreciation is a sum of the depreciation expense for 2011 plus 2012. That's 2000 plus 2000, that's 4000. So your accumulated depreciation in this case will be $4,000. What is the difference between depreciation expense and accumulated depreciation? One broad analogy to try to understand the difference is think of your paycheck. Think of your paycheck where you have your weekly wages and you have your year-to-date wages. So your weekly wages reflects the wages you have earned in this period, whereas your year-to-date wages is a cumulative number from the beginning of the year. In this case, your accumulated depreciation is a total depreciation you've taken on this asset from the day you bought it. Okay, so that's a little bit about accumulated depreciation. Are you ready for some more information? All right, I'll give you a moment to get your breath and clear your head and we'll do the next calculation, which is the book value, item number C. 
book value plus the formula. The book value, again, has to have a time reference. So in this case, we want the book value at the end of 2012. So your book value at the end of 2012 will be the original cost minus the accumulated depreciation through the end of 2012. And note, we just finished calculating the accumulated depreciation through the end of 2012 in item B, which was 4,000. So your book value is your original cost of 11,000 minus your AD. I'm going to use AD for accumulated depreciation as a short form, okay? So 11,000 minus 4,000 AD gives you a $7,000 of book value at the end of 2012. Note the pattern here. As each year goes by, your accumulated depreciation will keep increasing by 2,000. So your AD at the end of 2013 will be 6,000. And your book value, as each year goes by, your book value proportionally goes down. So your AD keeps going up and your book value keeps going down. So please make a note of that pattern, okay? All right, that's about it for the straight line method.